Hey guys, Blanks here, bringing you part one of my new series I'm going to call Damon's Souls Remake Mini Guides. The goal of this series is to bring my audience valuable information about speedrunning strats in a quick, concise, and easy to follow format. Today we are going to be covering how to take care of Old Monk quickly depending on his varied openers, and how we were able to squeeze out a couple extra levels using a soul duping exploit. Old Monk is the Archdemon boss in World 3, the Tower of Latria, and was the first installment of the infamous PvP bosses in Souls games. Just like Mirror Knight and Half Light, if you are playing online while running up the tower, a player that puts down their summoning sign in the Ivory Tower will get summoned into the arena to fight as the Old Monk. Since all speedruns of this game are played offline, Old Monk will be the NPC that spawns in if the game cannot find a player to fight you. He is a hyper-aggressive red phantom wielding claws and a timed homing solero above his head which get more deadly the more HP he loses. This one tip alone may ruin the fight casually, so here's a disclaimer. This video is only for the purpose of learning how to optimally kill him in a speedrun or challenge run. But with that disclaimer out of the way, Old Monk is programmed to swing when you kite him towards a chair. Meaning theoretically there are enough opportunities to break his AI that you never have to actually fight him. You can just run him around the room till all the chairs are broken and by that point he's probably low enough to just finish off on your own. We have used this mechanic in the speedrun to get four soul rays off in him off the opener. If he behaves. Keywords, if he behaves. If he were to just do the same opener every time, I would not be making this video. Old Monk is one of the most, if not the most, RNG fights in the whole run. But that's okay. We're here to learn together, so let's get into it. Very quickly, I'm just going to go over Man Eater Skip, as it is one of the simplest tricks in the run, so I'm not going to spend too long on it. Simply run off the ledge at the end of the arena at this angle. Next, point the camera up and to the left. And once you see the collision disappearing under your feet, keep holding up on the analog stick and quit out after you start falling. You'll know you got it if the screen turns green when you're going back to the title menu. When you load back in, the game will think you are in the ivory tower, aka the Mandator Archstone, meaning your death warp location is stored there instead of Upper Latria, or the Fool's Idol Archstone. So, just run off the edge after entering the fog, and that's it. And trust me, it is a lot easier than it sounds. After you perform Maneater Skip, you are now stuck here. Now, I use this term loosely because you can go back to the Nexus if you wanted to, but for the purpose of speedruns, this is actually a good thing because if you die at any point, you'll just spawn back at the Archstone, even though there isn't one here. The climb up to Old Monk is pretty technical, so I will guide you through it slowly and break it up into chunks. First, if you're running any percent, you'll want to pick up the souls in the ground. If you notice, I use my Tower Knight soul or Phalanx soul to get it out of the way. This is because I'm about to dupe the soul. This method allows us to use one soul as if it were two, and two souls as if it were three. Before we can dupe the first soul, we need to take care of the two centipedes in our way. I like to toggle right away out of the cutscene. It tends to make one of them follow me, but this isn't factual or anything, it's just a theory that I have. Then run into one until he does the melee attack with his tail. This is a fairly quick clever rat ring setup because we already had to die to bypass Maneater, so with torso and gloves unequipped, one counter damage attack from the centipede will set us up. Then aim a soul ray to hit them both like I do here. Now that they are taken care of, we can now dupe the souls safely. I wait to dupe the second one till a little bit later, but if you want, you can dupe them right away. This method's a little tricky, and I will link the video made by runner Duclier about duping souls using action queuing, but if you want to learn through trial and error, here are the steps. Roll, queue up the action when your back hits the ground, press options, R1, up on the d-pad, and use the soul from your inventory before the soul usage animation starts. I hope I was specific enough for this part. I had a little bit of trouble getting the dupes to work myself, so don't be discouraged if it doesn't work for the first few times. Taking down the centipedes is different in each category. It really depends on how you want to manage your mana. In Glitchless, I like to use a bright water as I'm climbing up the tower, and if I wanted to conserve mana, I'll do a one-handed R2 attack with the Crescent Falchion, which one-shots them. In any percent, I deplete all of my mana on centipedes and use four on the Mind Flayer. Once I'm out of mana, I do a one-handed R1 attack or an R2 attack in any percent no bow tech, and then use an Age Spice. Something new I'm doing in any percent is a quick fresh spice right after the double centipede kill, right before the top. 
This way I have enough mana to kill Old Monk with only Soul Rays if I get good on RNG. I would highly recommend this for any percent since using melee at any point in the fight is a risk you don't really need to take at this point. Now getting past this mind flare at the top can be a little bit scary so pay close attention to what I do right here. I run into the wall to get him to shoot it with the green projectile and then I quickly squeeze in a, a two handed running attack to stagger him and get past him. This can be tricky for newcomers so definitely practice the timing a bit. Congratulations, you made it up the tower in one piece. Now time for the real challenge. Let's name the openers to make it easier to reference to them. The one I'm about to show is called Sprint because he runs directly at you as soon as his AI activates. Notice how I shuffle to the left very slightly so I can be in position to catch him and punish this one. Cast Sol Ray as he's about to swing at the chair to interrupt him and try to squeeze in another one before he recovers. This opener isn't ideal because you can only get two Sol Rays off. Now we need to backpedal and wait out the first homing Soleros. So I'm going to go for melee attacks to soften him up, but this is very dangerous and I'm only doing it because I have no choice. I need to take big risks on this fight in order to PB. You can try to get him to another chair before his homing Soleros come out, but if you see them spawning in, don't even try to punish. You're too late. Just wait them out and try again at the next chair. Keep repeating this process until he dies, and remember, patience is key. Watch how I finish out the fight and if you're bold enough, incorporate the melee attacks in my backstab strat which we'll go over later. This opener is called Magic, or Soul Ray, or Bad RNG. This opener is the worst by far because it's basically just that delays the fight for no reason, and doesn't accomplish anything. The fight can be considered a brand new opener after you roll the soul ray he shoots. From this point you have to use the three chairs in the front of the room to not lose a ton of time here. In this clip I got really unlucky so I decided to take the fight into the middle of the room and mix up melee and magic attacks while he's stuck in a loop of attacking. Eventually the fight goes my way and he decides to come to the chairs allowing me to finish him off with some melee attacks into a backstab. Finally, the best possible opener, and the most common from my experience. As far as we know, there isn't much you can do to manipulate him to do this. I like to enter the fog from the left side, but that may be placebo. This opener is super straightforward. To shoot Sol Ray at him right before he attacks the first chair, squeeze in another one just like the sprint opener, except this opener allows you to get two more Sol Rays off by strafing left and leading him to the next chair and doing the exact same thing. This fight is from any percent glitchless, so it's going to go by a lot faster than the other fights I have shown, but after the opener, the fight is basically the same, so knowledge transfers over and the same principles I have taught you earlier will apply. Hope this guide made your experience with learning Old Monk just a little easier. Now I will teach you one last trick to spit up the fight a lot. The backstab. Probably the one thing runners ask me about the most about the Old Monk fight is how I'm able to backstab him so consistently. I'm going to attempt to explain and diagnose possible issues with the backstab. Watch this fillet attempt at a backstab carefully. I block the swipe, but I am too far in front of him so he backpedals, but right after I get the right angle on the block. See how I am already basically behind him as the block goes off? Without strafing too far right, go all the way around him and press R1 when you think he is about to recover. The only thing I can recommend to get better at this strat is to go into the fight with full HP and just practice blocking and strafing behind him. If you can't get the backstab on your first few goes, then that's okay. This took me hours to master. Don't be discouraged, and hope this video helped you understand Old Monk just a little more. Thank you for watching. Oh! Dash. Oh. No! This video was a lot of fun to make and I really hope it helped at least one person. That would mean the world to me. The next video will be about another tricky boss I get lots of questions about. Stay tuned.